Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged, coming to you uh, from Cheltenham, a beautiful town in the west of England. And we've come along here to see what happens when you change the battery in an electric vehicle. But before we start that, I just want to mention how important it is for us, us at Fully Charged, that you, the lovely audience, subscribe to this channel. It makes a huge difference to us, very little commitment on your part. It doesn't cost anything. Just click that subscribe button. It will increase the number of our subscribers, which really helps us because the lovely people at YouTube will give us a little bit more help with the more subscribers we have. Don't want to talk about it anymore. Just want to ask you to do that for us. If you can be bothered, that would be lovely. What we're here to see today, as I said, is this battery swapping. So let's get on with it and stop waffling, okay? <laughs> this is a Nissan Leaf. That is Cleveland EV, and this is fully charged. Don't forget our great EV giveaway. Subscribe and enter for the chance to win one of several electrifying prizes, including one of four electric cars. So Matt, thanks very much for letting us come along and see what you're up to now. So just to, can you explain to people, so this, your company has been going a long time, used to service petrol and diesel cars, but now you've started to do the battery swapping. Yes. Which is, is that a fairly recent addition to the business? Yes, it is. So it's a, a supply and demand type thing, really. We were getting asked a lot to do battery swaps. Could we do battery swaps? Uh, we'd established ourselves. Cleveland EV has been going for three years now. So we established ourselves in the EV community right. um, as the trusted EV independent to go to to get an honest device. And uh, we were getting a lot of inquiries. Can we change batteries? Can we improve battery health? Can we change uh, battery cells so it started with a battery cell and then we teamed up with Muxan in Holland to be able to do the battery swaps right. because the uh, the communications part of it uh, between the battery management systems and the, so the new battery right. and the car needs various communications right. to be so, isn't, so it isn't quite as simple as taking out a couple of double A's from a radio and putting another two in it's no I wish it was but yeah. it's a little bit more <laughs> complex than that that the uh, the the battery management software ECU within the battery housing is actually needs to communicate right. with the rest of the car and uh, rather than swap over the BMS's from the packs because they're of different age and everything's coded to the cars yeah. there needs to be a communications interface right. and various software bits of trickery and that's what Muxan in Holland provide to us right right and so what you're doing then is you're getting uh, uh, I mean, let's, let's sort of clarify what this is, because it's not sort of batteries of all kinds. It's, it's fair. Is it mostly Nissan, early Nissan Leafs? Is that what you've mostly done? Yeah, currently we're right. working on a Leaf platform or Muxan provide kit for the Leaf platform. Right. Um, we are generally swapping Gen 1 batteries um, in Leafs. Not to say that we can't swap a Gen 2 or 3 or 4, right. but um, the, the ones that we're seeing with the most degraded batteries are the very early Japanese Leafs yeah. with the cream interiors that uh, have, have been on the road 9, 10 years. Um, they've had a use already. We've seen some that have done you know, 100,000 miles plus. Right. Why not put another healthier battery yeah. in it? So we're going from a 24 kilowatt hour battery that wasn't the best battery chemistry in the first place and has degraded slightly, um, might have 16 to 20 kilowatt hours now usable. Right. And the, the owners love the car, that it does everything they need it to do. So they want to step it up. So we're putting 40 kilowatt hour batteries out of um, crash damaged leafs right. where the, the battery is good we're sourcing them from salvage yards all over Europe uh, bringing them in and swapping them so that this car has or the, the earlier car has a second lease of life right so then you take the battery out you've got the new one in customer happy they drive off with their massively improved range but yeah. you've got a battery pack so what happens to that um, so I'm looking for a, a second life for those. My aim and my goal, and when I get time, my sort of side project will be to create some battery storage for our facility here, our yeah. workshops here. So I'm about to have 30 kilowatts of solar put on the roof. Right. Uh, we're fairly low consumer, so we will not use all of that energy, yeah. certainly in the summer that's being produced. Um, I've got solar at home, so I'm well aware of how it works. I've got battery storage at home. So if I can create battery storage here yeah. with batteries that we're removing out of leaf and we can have them all racked up to have 
to say, say it's got 20 kilo hours of usable uh, room in that, yeah. in that pack we've removed, daily cycling it where it's on a charge discharge cycle is perfect use case yeah. for that battery. And so what you're seeing in that case then, from the experience I've got with my Leaf, is a, a range increase from, I'm trying to be sort of realistic, 55 <laughs> to 60 miles I've got in mine now, if, yeah. if it's on a nice day, to well, well, well over 100 then. I mean, Yeah, the, the Gen 1 Leafs actually seem to really like having a 40 kilowatt hour battery, right. and then, or, or perhaps be the way it's, the, the owners get used to driving them very efficiently and things yeah. like that, that you end up with, um, a range of 160 plus miles right. on occasion out right. of a 40. Yeah. So uh, how that's I mean, and that is a massive, you know, for people who don't drive electric cars, th the difference between having a car that will do 60, yeah, which you can use. I use mine all the time. I mean, it's not like you can't use it. It still works perfectly all right, but you yeah. just don't want to go too far. But to have that, the jump from that to 160 puts it in a whole different it makes a massive difference just to take those numbers, yes. the, take the number game off the screen and yeah. give it so much range that yeah. you're not going to make it a concern. So, and then, so, okay, so say you've got a, an eight that, well, we're going to see that, we're seeing that today, but a Nissan Leaf of that era, yeah. it, it, they, cut, they bring it in. So how long is it here for? How long does that process take? So it's around about four hours, three to four hours. So we, we get it in. Um, we initially just check the original battery do a leaf spy report on it have right. a look at all the cells what state of health it's at we print a report at that stage before we remove it um, next it will be then putting in what's called the can bridge so that's the communications interface um, we install it into the car so that it sits in line with the communications network and um, then i pull data off of that can bridge send it off to holland uh, where they modify that data, send it back to me wow. in order for a 40 kilowatt hour battery to, to, to fit and work. Whilst that, they're doing the swap and a modification of the data, I get the battery uh, out of the car. So right. up on the ramp, under trays off, battery out, new battery in. They fit the same, right. so there's not really any modifications to do. I mean, that is do. extraordinary, isn't it? So the, 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 the actual pack size yeah between a 24 kilowatt hour and a 40 kilowatt hour is the same. There's no difference in that. No, it's, it's progress in technology. Yeah. So it's the same so is it, physical battery. presumably batteries. a bit heavier. Is it a bit heavier? A tiny bit, I oh, assume, right. but not, oh. not a noticeable amount. If right. you jump from a 40 to a 62, the pack is physically bigger, right. but it will still fit with different brackets and things into a Gen 1 Leaf as well. Wow. The only other thing we need to change is um, the communications low voltage cables from the car to the battery because Nissan changed it when they swapped from Gen 1 to Gen 2. Right. Uh, so we need but to do some But that's manageable. That, that, yeah, yeah, it's a it's best part of an hour's right. soldering and um, changing of wiring. And that's the longest part of the job, to be honest. Right, right. So Matt, that looks, I mean, I'm saying that looks fairly straightforward. There's no way I could do it, but you know, essentially you're undoing a load of bolts. You're dropping down a big battery pack, unplugging it. Yes. So um, the underside thing. So once we've got the Cambridge installed in the footwell, we took the data off. Sent That's it off right. To you did that first. So I did that you? first. Yeah. That's the key thing first. Whilst the car is in, in its initial state, we need to tap into that communications network right. um, and get the specific way, the binary way that the communication network works. Send that off to Holland. But is that different with every car? They've all got yes. their own coded That's right, system. Yeah. So you so can't you can't ignore that. You've got to do that or you've got to dig. No, it'd be, it'd be great and a load easier for me if we had a standardized way of, of uh, fitting that Cambridge just with a pre-battery change and a post-battery change right. software, but each one is individual and tailored to the car's communication. Right. So, but then, uh, yeah, under trays off, battery out once disconnected, yeah. obviously make it safe as well first. Um, and then battery out of the way, change the wiring because it was a Gen 1, so it's got that different low voltage communications right. connector that goes on the front of the battery. Once I've changed that over, 
battery back in, rebolt it, and um, plug it all up and test it. Right. So, so find I can't imagine for it. what we don't know what that one, uh, the one you just changed, what its old battery pack would have been at when it was full. But roughly, what, what do you reckon it would have been like? Probably this time of year, uh, probably in the region of about 50 miles max. I would have thought. Right. Yeah. It was down so what, nine bars, what so. you've done has made a really big. Change. Huge, huge difference, yeah. And it keeps, what did it say? 132, 134? 134, 134, and I don't know the overall state of charge no, of that battery because it's just come yeah. over on a on a boat. So, right. yeah, um, we'll probably, well, we will be able to charge that battery and get some more range on top of right. what's showing on the guesser meter at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. So then the, the batteries are here after you've done it. What, yes. What, so, we, you know, what, what's going to happen to these? Because you've got, I can tell you're going to build up <laughs> stock. Yes. <laughs> the, um, most importantly, the, the customer's free to take it if they want to. Right. If you've got your own use for the battery, take it, that's fine. Um, but we will find a second use for it, whether we, there's uh, hobbyists that are creating their own DIY cars, right. uh, EVs, so we'll break a pack and sell a number of modules out of it, right. um, or sell a complete pack if someone's in trouble. Um, we had somebody inquire for one of the packs we removed had an 85% state of health. It wasn't right. good enough for the owner of the car right. there and then. but for somebody else who's down to seven bars for instance yeah. if they want a cheap way of actually getting um, their car back up to a usable amount of range right. then there's a used battery here yeah. that's ready to go in because that's the thing i have got no idea is roughly what the cost is so or right. what it would cost to replace them but because it's difficult because they're not putting in a brand new product no you're putting in a second hand that's right. Yeah, right, they're, they're not um, cheap to source. Right. Um, so once we get it into the country, our price is eight and a half thousand pound, including VAT fitted. Right. So that's everything that you've seen me do today yeah. uh, for, to convert to a 40 kilowatt hour battery. Right. That is right. slightly di price dependent on availability of the battery. Yeah. But um, the, the 62 that we'll be doing at some point soon, um, that's 13 and a half thousand. Right. But when you think about um, the price difference between an old 24, what it's worth if you were going to part exit in for a 40 kilowatt hour battery, yes. for instance, which are around about 18, 19,000 pounds to buy still. Well, if you were going to buy a new, I mean, is it possible to buy a brand new battery pack from Nissan? I mean, is it even? I believe so. I haven't right. inquired as the rice because. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't imagine what they would charge for it. But I've heard rumours that a 30 is somewhere around about 15,000 right. for a okay. 30 kilowatt hour. So I don't know right. what they charge for a 40, but right. whilst there are still batteries out there yeah. from crash damaged cars and things. Then well, because there's now awesome. like half a million Nissan Leafs on the, the yeah. world's roads. Yeah. So there's going to be a few. Yeah, <laughs> they will be shut in, I suppose it's inevitable, isn't it? And that, but I mean, that, so uh, presumably there, there are crashes that are severe enough where you can't reuse the battery. But, the, but the, I would assume so. I haven't yeah, seen any as yeah. yet, but if the, it was wrong. I mean, they are very well protected within the car, aren't they? So they're Hugely generally well. going to survive that. Yes, yeah. yeah the, and so that's the, I suppose that's the other side of it is what the, sh the supply is like, you know, whether that's likely to drive. I mean, I think it sort of almost feels like it's a, a temporary measure in terms of the long-term view of electric vehicles because I think in f five years time mm. if you buy an electric car the battery's going to outlast the car you know you know it's yeah. the one thing you probably know, you might be replacing a lot of other things but probably not the battery <laughs> yeah w what we're doing now is keeping is the that, first generation, that first generation yeah. of EVs on the road yeah and making sure that they're still usable for the customers yeah. by fitting in some of the later technology. And yes. like you say, five years time, it's gonna be different again. Yeah. So, um, but we'll keep our eye on things. We'll constantly change our business, business yeah. model to help other EV owners and drivers and users. Yeah. And yeah, that's what we're all about here. Brilliant. So I think that's been a really amazing thing to see. Uh, I think it is, as we discussed with Matt, uh, you know, very specific to these early electric vehicles that, that, that came out 10, you know, between eight and 10 years ago, they're still going, they're still fine. They're still really usable. And the fact that you can upgrade it and suddenly get a car with proper decent range is really brilliant. So it's been great to see this happening. I'm, I'm definitely gonna keep, keep in touch with Matt to find out what he does with the battery packs. We know there's other companies that are using these battery packs for static storage in their factories and their houses and stuff like that. Uh, you know, so it, there's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting world that we're entering together as we move forward in the energy transition. <laughs>
think it's time I shut up. I'm going to quickly mention subscribing because we're really trying to get a load more subscribers on the Fully Charged Show. So if you haven't subscribed, please do. But other than that, we just think you're brilliant for watching. So I really hope you enjoyed this battery swap episode. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. As some of you may know, I have a Nissan Leaf. My battery has already been swapped, and we're making another episode about that as soon as we're able, coming later this year. I will be test driving my beloved 11-year-old Nissan Leaf that has, I have been told, hugely increased range. Stay tuned.